Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! Commander Corey has recently learned an appalling fact. The United Planets are under threat of attack by enemy forces from another solar system called Tirana. Agents from Tirana are mingling undetected among citizens of the ten planets gathering information. These agents have even succeeded in recruiting members of the solar system to act as spies for Tirana. Right now in his central office at Space Patrol headquarters on the man-made planet Terra, Buzz Corey grimly stands before a huge star map discussing the situation with Cadet Happy. Oh, we've got to face it, Happy. Right now, nearly every advantage is with the enemy. Well, their spies still haven't been able to send back samples of our weapons. We fixed that by destroying their big cargo ship the other day. So, Tarana must be waiting till they know more about us. And they're learning more every day. Except for Smee, we don't know who their spies are. Oh. And if we only knew where Tarana was, we could do a little spying ourselves. Find out what we're up against. Uh, could be any one of a thousand stars. Probably in our whole solar system, only a few people know the exact location. They're Tarana agents. Perhaps one or two collaborators know the secret. Yeah, it sure puts us in a spot, Commander. You know, I'd give a million credits to be able to go up to that star map and put my finger right on Tarana. Yeah, that's it. What, sir? If word should get out that the United Planets government would pay a large sum of money to know where Tarana is, maybe one of those spies would be tempted to change loyalties. Well, if I could just get my hands on him, I'd get the secret and save the government some money. And the trouble is we're working against time. And with very little information. I'll give you a suggestion to the Secretary General. The decision will be up to him. My suggestion? <laughs> Gee, but... Yeah, but maybe we'll get a lot of crackpots who claim to know where Tarana is just to collect the money. The Bernograph test will take care of that. I'll contact the Secretary General right away. Several days pass. Now, millions of DUs from Terra on the planet Neptune, the only known agent of Tarana admits a visitor to his hideout. Known in the solar system as Matthew Smead, he's gathering evidence on United Planets defenses for transmission to Tirana. Well, Rogan, what have you to report? Did you hear about the reward the government is offering? Reward? Yeah. Half a million credits for information leading to the identification and discovery of Tirana. <laughs> That's very funny. No one in the solar system knows where Tirana is, except we Tiranians. Our collaborators are demanding United Planets money. We could sure use that half million credits and give the Space Patrol the advantage of knowing where its enemy is. What can they do about it? They can't attack Toronto with their one little star drive ship. And anyway, couldn't we give them false information? No. They have a lie detector, a brainograph. Uh, yeah, that's right. Wait. Someone who believed he had the right information could give false data and not be detected. Now, that's an idea. It'd look like he was telling the truth. He could collect the money and hand it over to us. Well, it isn't quite as simple as that. The informer cannot cooperate with us. That cooperation would show up on a brainograph. Oh, then we're stuck. No, we must select someone who is sure to double-cross us. Well, for half a million credits, that could be almost anybody. The other day you mentioned one of our spies on Terra. You said... Uh, you were in doubt about his loyalty to our cause? Oh, uh, Milton Croy. Yeah, he was supposed to give us figures on spaceship production, but he hasn't been very helpful. All right, Rogart. You will reveal our precious secret to Milton Croy. A few hours later, in the security lab of Space Patrol headquarters, a nervous little man sits in a comfortable chair to which is attached a maze of electronics equipment. As Commander Corey questions the subject, Cadet Happy watches the control panel of the sensitive brainogram. Croy, a moment ago in my office, you told me you knew the location of Tirana. Is that true? Uh, yes, sir. Where is Tirana? It's in the constellation Vela. Tirana is a class K star about 75 light years from the solar system. Croy, how did you get this information? From a man named Rogart. Who is Rogart? Uh, he, he's a fellow I've had dealings with. A fellow who bribed you to reveal information on spaceship production? Yes. You knew his purpose was to overthrow the United Planets, yet you took his money, huh? Well, at first, but I didn't give him any accurate information, honest. You don't have to assure me of how honest you are, Croy. The brainograph will show it. When did Rogart first approach you? Uh, about six weeks ago. 
You waited until now, until there was a half million credit reward before you reported it. Why? Well, I, I needed money. And I thought I could outsmart Rogart. Uh, I've been trying to break away from him. Then he came to me yesterday with this big story of how wonderful Tirana is with its five planets and everybody rich and with science advanced far beyond us. Why do you tell you all this? To get me to stick with him, I guess. He's making all sorts of promises. But I got scared. I guess until then I didn't really think Tirana existed. What's the reading, Hunt? It's mostly the truth. Croy didn't exactly run himself down in regard to his motives, but otherwise he was sticking to the facts. All right, Hap, cut off the brainograph. You can stand up now, Croy. That's all for now. Do uh, I... Yes, yes, you get your money. I'll put through the necessary papers right away, and the comptroller will notify you when you can pick up the check. Now, will you uh, step into the next room, please? Yes, uh, of course. Uh, goodbye, Commander. Well, half a million credits for just a few words. Yeah, they could save us billions. And more important, that information might save millions of lives. What's our next move? See if we can locate Tirana? Yes. I will sign an agent to guard Milton Croy, and then we'll blast off in the star drive. It won't take long to discover if Tirana is massing a task force for an invasion. Shortly after Milton Croy leaves the Space Patrol headquarters building, Rogarth contacts Matthew Smead by a space phone call to Neptune City. It's working fine, Smead. Croy ran right straight to the Space Patrol. Uh huh? How about the half a million credits? Well, Croy looked happy when he came out. But I don't think he's collected yet. We'll have to exercise extreme caution in getting it away from him. You stay on Terra and handle that end of it. Sure. And listen, there's something else that makes me sure the Space Patrol fell for Croy's yarn. The maintenance crew at the spaceport is working on the star drive. Ah. So Commander Corey's going out to look for Tirana. <laughs> yeah. But if he keeps looking where Milton Croy told him, he'll be gone a million years. He'll be gone longer than that. This is my chance to get rid of Corey for good. Using completely false information obtained from Milton Croy, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have boarded the Star Drive ship that enables them to cross interstellar distances in incredibly brief time. Buzz has set the hyperspace vector computer to bring them out of Star Drive 75 light years from the sun within the constellation Vela. drive happened. You ready to check the view scopes? Yes, sir. If we're near Toronto, we've got to be on the lookout for their ships. Well, if we see one, how about testing our new cosmic torpedo one? Well, no, Hap. We're here on a reconnaissance mission only. Besides, if they identify this as a United Planet ship, they'd have an excuse to launch a full-scale attack on our solar system. We're near a star, sir. I wonder if that's Toronto. Croy said Toronto was Class K, which is an orange star. This one's on the yellow side, almost yellow-white. Mm, that would make it uh, Class F. Half look at the rear view scope. Hmm? Hey, a meteor. It's coming right toward us. Well, that's no meteor, half. It's a spaceship. A spaceship? Hey, then maybe we're near Tirana after all. Forget those controls. That fellow means business. Hey, he's on a collision course and really accelerating. Instead, half, going to try evasive action. He's still on our tail, sir. He keeps gaining on us at that rate. He'll ram us. Hey, what's happening? There's another image in the view scope. He's fired a projectile at us. Half, we're going to test that cosmic missile after all. Stand by to fire. Yes, sir. Standing by. Uh-oh, Commander, that other ship vanished. Yes, but the projectile's still gaining. Ready, Hap? Ready, sir. Fire one. Ours is a guided missile. If that other one is, too. We'll see an interesting game of tag. I'd like to know what happened to that other ship. Did it explode? Probably the pilot put it in the star drive after launching that projectile. Our cosmic missile ought to hit in any second. Hey, look at the view scope. That projectile, it's launching other projectiles. They're confusing our torpedo. It's changing vector. Our torpedo exploded. But those guided missiles are still coming. Keep firing, Hap. We've got to stop them or they'll blow us apart. Matthew Smead and Rogarth are agents of Tirana, a remote solar system that intends to attack the United Planets. To obtain money for espionage, they supplied untrue information about Tirana to a former spy who turned it over to the Space Patrol to collect a half-million credit reward. On the basis of this information, Buzz and Happy blasted off in their star drive ship to locate Tirana. 
Just as they learned they were on a false scent, a strange spaceship suddenly appeared, launched a guided missile at them, and then disappeared into hyperspace under star drive. Buzz and Happy fired their own cosmic torpedo with the approaching projectile, but their own warhead exploded harmlessly. Meantime, the enemy projectile hurtles closer to the commander's ship. Keep firing, Hap. Yes, sir. Oh, it's no use, sir. Every time we fire, that other projectile launches a twin, and our missile chases it. Hap, those other projectiles aren't real. Not real, but they show up in the view scope, and they explode our torpedoes. Yes, but you'll notice they aren't destroyed, not by the explosion. They continue off at an angle, then vanish. Yes, sir, but more keep coming out. See? It happened again. Those are ghost projectiles. Images. They trick our view scope. The target locator on the torpedoes. They're just electromagnetic decoys to pull our torpedoes off course. Hey, Commander, can't we kick into star drive? Not I finish computing the hyperspace vector. There isn't much more time, sir. That projectile's really getting close and fast. Just keep firing, Hap. Yes, sir. No more ammunition, sir. Our last torpedo just exploded on one of those those ghosts. How far are we ahead of that projectile? Well, according to the computer, sir, ten seconds. I don't know. Check on this hyperspace vector, but we don't have the time. I'll get in the star drive and hope we come out in the solar system. Just so we get away from that projectile. That's all I'm asking. Here we go. Hey, look at that guided missile. We could almost reach out and write our names on the nose. Hope it doesn't chase us into hyperspace if we make it. screens and viewports are black. And somewhere in regular space, there's a deadly guided missile sniffing around with egg on its face, wondering where we went. And I'm wondering where we're going. Well, shouldn't we come out of star drive into our solar system? Yeah, that's the idea, but trying to set up a complicated hyperspace vector under those conditions is like playing chess on a ski scale. Keep your fingers crossed, Pat. regular space. Yes, sir. Well, there's a star. Looks like the sun, all right. Hey, you made it, Commander. There's Saturn. Those rings are a real landmark. We're home. Yes, and with a real job on our hands. Without arousing anyone's suspicion, even Milton Croy's. We've got to find out how he happened to give us that false information on Tirana. Meantime, from a spaceship just inside the Pluto orbit, Matthew Smead makes spacephone contact with his fellow Tyranian Rogard. You can stop worrying now, Rogard. I took care of Corey. Great. How did you do it? Launched a guided missile at his ship. He'll be marked off as missing in action. Sure, the United Planets authorities will figure he found Tirana, and our forces got him. Well, in a way, they'll be correct. But it will be weeks at least before another star drive ship is available. By that time, it won't do them any good to know that Tirana is not in the constellation Vela. Say, Smeed, about that half million credits, Mark Croy's been paid. But the money's in the Terra Bank, and that makes it pretty tough to get at. Well, we'll persuade Croy to draw it out. How? I can't go near him. He'll get suspicious and probably turn me over to the Space Patrol. Just leave that to me. As soon as I return this star drive ship to its secret base, I'll come to Terra. You out of your mind? You'll be picked up. But Commander Corey out of the way, I can swing it. It doesn't take much of a disguise to fool these unobservant primitive people of this solar system. Elsewhere on the planet Terra, Buzz and Appy have just returned to the commander's office, where Buzz quickly scans the papers that have accumulated during his absence. Well, here's good news, at least. What is it, sir? Project Argus is nearly completed. Project which? Argus. It's a code name for a new piece of space patrol equipment. Believe me, it's going to come in handy. What kind of equipment, sir? A new weapon? Mm, not exactly, but used correctly, it's better than a weapon. Hey, you've got me all curious. It's top secret now, Hap, but... Well, if you promise on your honor as a space patroller to... Oh, yes, sir. I won't tell a soul. Well, space patrol scientists have developed a new type of periscope, Hap. It's as much an improvement over the ordinary telescope as... Well, as our star drive is over regular rocket drive. You mean it can see farther? Not only that, but in more detail. It applies the hyperspace principle to optics, to light. With this periscope, we can watch criminals thousands of miles away, even on another planet. Smoking rockets? I wish I could see one. And they'll be issued to certain key personnel next week. Eventually, every space patrol will have one of these space patrol periscopes. Now, about our Tirana problem... Yes, sir? 
Milton Croy sincerely believed he was telling the truth about Tirana. The Brainograd test proves that, but whoever gave Croy that information was deliberately lying. Yeah, that's Rogarth, the Tirana agent. Right. Well, what do we do next? Bring Croy back here for more questions? No, not right away. I'll keep our agent on his tail and get a line of whoever contacts him. Meanwhile, we'll see if we can locate this Tarani and Rogarth. In another part of Terra, a very nervous Milton Croy answers the phone in his apartment. Hello? Milton Croy? Yeah. What do you want? The same thing I wanted when I called the last time. The money. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You double-crossed me. You sold out to the space patrol. And don't try to tell me you didn't. Now, are you going to hand over that half million credits, or am I going to have to use special Tyrannian methods? Look, I tell you, I, I haven't any money. Now, stop bothering me. All right, Croy. You've had your last warning. You won't live to spend a single credit of that money. Hello? Hello? Please. You're uh, Milton Croy, isn't that right? Yes. What do you want? I am a space patrol agent. Can we talk inside? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, of course. Come in. Oh, uh, here are my credentials if you care to examine them. Yes, uh, I see. Now, I don't want to cause you needless alarm, Mr. Croy, but you're in danger. What kind of danger? You've been receiving threatening phone calls, haven't you? Oh, you, you know about them, do you? Yes, Mr. Croy. You've been under surveillance ever since you made that report to headquarters. For your own protection, of course. However, matters have reached a stage where we can no longer guarantee your safety. What do you mean? That is, if you remain here on Terra. So we arrange to take you to Mars, where no one can harm you. Mars? Yes. There's a private cruiser at the spaceport now. We'll blast off as soon as you go to the bank. Naturally, you want to take your reward money with you. Uh, yeah. Look, why can't we just order a transfer to the Mars Bank? Mr. Croy, the Tyrannians have spies everywhere. Do you realize how many channels such a transaction would pass through? Transfer of a half a million credits would be sure to attract attention. Then your enemies would know you were on Mars. I, I see. But no one will suspect that you would be carrying that much money on your person. Now, come on. I'll go to the bank with you. Just a moment, huh? I'll throw some things into a bag. No, no. You don't want to advertise the fact that you're taking a trip. Come just as you are. Every second's delay, your life is in greater danger. All right, I'll come with you. Near the cargo loading ramp, just inside gate 16 at the Terra spaceport, a surface car pulls to a stop. Oh, wait, Hap, don't get out yet. We'll be less conspicuous in the car. Yes, sir. Besides, you want to check with Packard again. From the Corey and Mobile Unit, T-53, calling Special Agent Packard. Corey to Special Agent Packard. Packard here, Commander. Go ahead. I'm at the spaceport. So far, no sign of crime. I'm at Corey's apartment, Commander. Nothing's disturbed, and he sure hasn't packed for a trip. But he did draw the half million credits out of the bank. Oh, yes, sir. The bank guard's positive. Croy and this other man got into a surface cab. The guard heard one of them mention spaceport. I've got men checking the regular passenger gates. From here, I can see several private space cruisers. Commander, I'm sorry I lost sight of Croy. I was right behind him and this other fellow when all of a sudden a fight started right in the street. I caught a couple of wild swings, but by the time I got untangled, Croy was gone. I'm sure that fight was planned. Use your head checking with the bank right away. Nice work. Well, I figured... Now, hold it, Packard. Croy just walked under the ramp three gates down with his pal. Corey out. Four and a half. We'll see where they're going and then head them off. That's the ship right ahead there, Croy. All ready to blast off. I won't feel safe till we're out through the space locks. Just stop looking around. You'll only attract attention in case some Tyrannus pie is hanging around. See? The hatch is open. All you have to do is go out the ladder. Wait a minute. That man in the ship? Yes. That's our pilot. One of the best in the business. Now, come on. I got to look at his face to the viewport. I know that man. He's an agent from Toronto. Ah, you must be mistaken. No, I'm not. He's the man who's been threatening me. He's Rogar. Come on, Troy. You're not from the space patrol. Uh, that's a run agent, too. Get into that ship. No. No, I won't go. 
Uh, Rogart, come on, come here and give me a hand. Troubles me? Our passenger is suddenly reluctant. Jump down here and help me drag him aboard. Sure. Well, let go of me. Hurry up, Rogart, before somebody sees us. All right, Croy, let's go. Or do you want us to get rough? Okay, break it up. Grab him, Happy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Take one more step and I'll blast all three of you. Hold it, Hemp. That's a blast gun. Now, stay right where you are while I get into the ship. Smeed. Smeed, where are you? I'm in the ship. Come on and bring Croy. Corey? What do you want with Corey? Not Corey, I said Corey. Milton Corey. He's got the money. It's in the belt around his waist. Hurry. Why didn't you say so? All right, Croy. Get moving. I'll take that plastic. Oh, God. Hey, nice going, Commander. Now we can get Smeed. Hey, close the hatch. He's going to blast off. Maybe this blaster will tear a hole in the hatch. What's the matter, sir? The chamber's empty. I guess I wasn't so brave rushing Rogarth after all. Get back, half stand clear that rocket blast. Doggone it. There he goes, out through the space lock. Well, we've got his partner anyway. Yeah. Bogoth, get up. What do you think of your fellow Turanian leaving you here to take the ramp? It's all for the cause. If he'd waited longer, the space lock would have been closed and neither one of us would have escaped. Smeed won't get far. Half watch Croy. I'll handle Rogoth. Commander, Croy didn't earn that money. It should be mine. I can tell you where Tirana really is. The reward was for information leading to the discovery of Tirana. What Croy told us led us to you. And the brainograph will do the rest. Yeah. And where you're going, Rogart, you won't need any money. <laughs> again next week for another thrilling adventure with Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. <laughs> Starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy was written by Lou Houston, directed by Larry Robertson, Dick Kufel speaking. Join us again next week. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.